The gehel is the equipment that pumps the heated slurry from high temperature heater to the autoclave. From the ore preparation area, slurry is stored at the H Paul slurry storage tanks 102 202 to gehel 1. The slurry will be transferred via centrifugal series pumps from 102 202 to gehel 1 to low temperature heater to the medium temperature heater and then to the high temperature heater. From the high temperature heater, or commonly called as HT, the slurry will then be pumped using the geho. The geho is a positive displacement reciprocating piston diaphragm pump. Positive displacement as it captures a fixed volume of fluid captured inside the cavity and discharges it repeatedly, and reciprocating piston diaphragm as the pump utilizes the repeated back and forth movement of a piston and diaphragm to create that cavity. Reciprocating pumps are generally designed to pump in low-flow, high-head applications. It is designed to handle slurry, particularly where abrasive materials or aggressive environments are involved. The cyclic action of reciprocating pumps creates pulses and damaging vibrations, which can be minimized by using two or more pistons, diaphragms, or dampeners. The geho consists of the drive unit, which includes the main electric motor, the gearbox, coupling and shafts, the power end which converts the circular motion of the pump drive into a linear motion of the connecting rod, cross head and piston which includes the forged alloy steel crankshaft and bearings among others, and the liquid end which is divided by a rubber diaphragm into two mechanically separated sections namely the propelling liquid section and the slurry section. Let us dive into the first section of the liquid end. The propelling liquid section. The propelling liquid section is filled with propelling liquid. It consists of the rear side of the diaphragm housing unit and the piston unit. The piston unit includes the piston, piston rod, and the crosshead rod. The piston is provided with a piston guide ring that centers the piston and the cylinder liner. It also consists of two sets of piston seal rings. First, is the piston seal to the propelling section that prevents loss of propelling liquid from the diaphragm housing, and second is the piston seal ring to the air side which prevents drawing in of air or drawing in of flushing liquid. The piston flushing unit uses the propelling liquid to lubricate the piston and cylinder. The rear side of the diaphragm housing unit. The rear side of the diaphragm housing unit includes the diaphragm and the monitoring rod. Separating the aforementioned slurry section from the propelling liquid section is the diaphragm. The diaphragm separates the low wear components and prevents contamination of the pump's working system. The monitoring rod, on the other hand, is an integral part of the propelling liquid control system. It ensures that the position of the diaphragm remains in its optimal position. It controls the amount of propelling liquid that is in the propelling liquid chamber. So how does this propelling liquid control system works? The movement of the piston generates an increase and decrease of pressure in the propelling liquid chamber. The diaphragm transfers the pressure fluctuations into the slurry section. The piston moves backward and decompresses the propelling liquid chamber. Then the diaphragm then moves backward which results in decrease in pressure and increase in volume at the slurry side forcing the suction valve to open and the discharge valve to close. Subsequently, if the piston moves forward and compresses the propelling liquid chamber, the diaphragm moves forward, resulting in high pressure slurry chamber and forces the suction valve to close and the discharge valve to open. Now knowing this, we don't want the diaphragm to be damaged by heating the back side or the front side of the diaphragm housing. So under normal conditions, the diaphragm should be moving at a certain length. This is where our propelling liquid control system works. Our diaphragm rod is equipped with a magnet that promotes ZSH, switch high, or ZSL, switch low. Under normal conditions, the magnet and the diaphragm rod moves between the monitoring probes ZSH and ZSL without actuating them. If there is less propelling liquid in the propelling liquid chamber during the suction stroke, then the magnet actuates monitoring probe ZSL, which gives the impulse to an input of the geho control box. Due to this impulse, an output will actuate the solenoid valves and the pneumatic main valves, and for a certain time, the flow for the flushing unit to the piston will be switched off, 
and propelling liquid will be added to the propelling liquid chamber. If there is too much propelling liquid in the propelling liquid chamber during the discharge stroke, then the magnet actuates monitoring probe ZSH, which gives the impulse to an input of the Geho control box. Due to this impulse, an output will actuate a solenoid valve SV, which actuates a pneumatic main valve HV, and for a certain time, propelling liquid will be drained from the propelling liquid chamber. The Mechanical Pressure Limitation the mechanical pressure limitation is a secondary safety backup system in the case the discharge pressure will exceed the maximum pressure parameters. One-way valve is situated between the diaphragm housings and a high-pressure manifold connects all of the propelling liquid chambers to a pressure relief valve. Thus, the highest normal pulsations in the propelling liquid system will be read by the pressure gauge connected to it and when the pressure exceeds the set maximum value, the PRV shall release the pressurized liquid back to the tank. The slurry section. The slurry section is the only section that is in contact with the pumped slurry. It consists of the suction and discharge valves or cone valves, the suction and discharge accumulators or air vessels, and the drop leg or heat barrier. Now let us start on the first part of the slurry section, the suction and discharge valves. The suction and discharge valves are commonly called as cone valves are essentially check valves. That means it promotes one direction of flow only. There is one suction and discharge valve on each diaphragm integrated into one cone valve housing that are connected to the drop leg, suction manifold, and discharge manifold. During the suction stroke, the slurry passes from the suction line through the suction valve into the heat barrier unit. During the suction stroke, the discharge valve prevents the slurry to flow back from the discharge line to the heat barrier unit. Meanwhile, during the discharge stroke, the slurry passes from the heat barrier unit through the discharge valve into the discharge line. During the discharge stroke, the suction valve prevents the slurry to flow back from the heat barrier unit into the suction line. This means in a one complete cycle of one suction and one discharge stroke, a fixed amount of volume of fluid is being discharged, and the only way to increase the flow is to increase the speed of the stroke. The service life of the cone valves depends on the abrasiveness and corrosiveness of the slurry, the maximum particle size of the slurry, and the pump processing temperature. So what happens when a jetting sound is observed? The sound you are hearing is when the cone valve is damaged and therefore an ample amount of slurry flows back from either the suction or discharge cone valve or both. This in turn minimizes the efficiency of the cone valves and subsequently reduces the actual volume that should be discharged and thus the observed decrease in alto flow.